Have you ever done renovations by knocking down walls to create a new space? My wife Andrea loves to remodel our house. We have had walls put up, walls bashed out, doorways moved and holes bricked up. All of this creates quite a mess before the final product when we can stand back and admire the new space that the renovations have created. One of the distinguishing marks of the early church was the way it broke through the things that separate. For each sinner, the barrier that kept us from the presence of God was torn away through the death of Jesus. At the moment of his death, the veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom, signifying that a new open way was being made for anyone to enter. It is possible that by faith in the atonement sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, we can enter boldly into a relationship with our Heavenly Father. The separation between the specially anointed of God and the rest of the people was taken away. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out on all flesh. As the gospel spread throughout the region, the Holy Spirit was poured out on groups of believers, on Jews, Samaritans, and even Gentiles. But there was a wall that was quite difficult to come down, the wall of racial separation that kept people from diverse ethnic backgrounds separate from each other. We are called to be part of God's household of faith, and he doesn't want there to be any walls of separation to keep us apart, to keep us from experiencing the rich diversity of his people. The walls must come down. Jesus has made a way, but each of us needs to allow the Holy Spirit to take a sledgehammer to our prejudice so that we can be free to love, accept, and celebrate one another. In our world today, racial tensions are at the forefront of our news. Black Lives Matter, white farm attacks, police brutality, Palestinians and Israel, the Rohingya ethnic cleansing in Myanmar. These all make true the words of Jesus, who said that in the end times, nation would rise against nation. There was a city in the ancient world that became the launching point of the gospel into the Gentile world. Its name was Antioch. It was the third most important city in the Roman Empire after Rome and Alexandria. Some estimate that 500,000 people lived there. It was ethnically diverse with Greeks, Romans, Syrians, Jews and other Orientals sharing city space. But in order to keep the peace, Walls were built to keep each ethnic group to a specific area. It is no mistake that Antioch was the place God chose for the gospel to be launched, because it was in this city that racial segregation was overcome by those who received the gospel of Jesus. If it could happen in Antioch, it could happen anywhere in the world. The leaders of the believers were from all over the place, Cyprus, North Africa, Israel, and they were from different class structures. We read that Menaean had been brought up in nobility with King Herod Antipas. Simeon, who was called Niger, or Simeon the Black, was a black African, and perhaps the same man who carried the cross for Jesus to his crucifixion. The mix of cultural backgrounds was increased when you think that there were many who were unnamed working side by side with the likes of Barnabas and Saul. There were teachers, apostles and prophets together working for the growth of the church. Greeks and Jews were part of this church. But something amazing happened. They were called by a new title to distinguish them from all others. Perhaps it was the way that they were unafraid to mix together to be found in each other's company, to share the faith despite the things that would naturally divide them. They were not called Greek believers or Jewish followers, but Christians. There was something unique about them that citizens of Antioch felt the need to give them a new identity. But this identity showed that a new community was emerging, one that pointed to Christ 
rather than to any specific national heritage. It was to this community that Peter came. He seemed to love these people. It was something new and exciting for him, and he mixed freely with Jewish and Gentile believers. But when some visitors came from Jerusalem, Peter felt vulnerable, that perhaps they would see him mixing with the Gentiles. So he separated himself. Paul had to rebuke him for this prejudice that he showed. Yes, even the great apostle Peter had walls in his heart. We look in dismay at our world being shaped by national identity and racial hatred. It is into this situation that Jesus will thrust his church to show the world true unity through love. The church of Jesus Christ is the one solution for hatred between people. If we can allow the Spirit to take the sledgehammer to destroy our walls of prejudice, the world will also see Jesus and call us Christians for all the right reasons. As Jesus prayed, May they be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Jesus also said in John 13, 35, By this will all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Is there hope for our fractured world? Yes, in Jesus. For he himself is our peace, who has made both Jew and Gentile one, and has broken down the middle wall of separation. How can we who have been given access through everything that would separate us from God keep our walls of prejudice to keep others away? It seems impossible. But like in Antioch, in the midst of racial tension and segregation, a church was planted that expressed the love of Jesus and from here exploded out into the world with the gospel of peace. Getting rid of walls is messy and it takes effort. But once it is done, there is a new space created where love can reside and people can see Jesus. Father, please renovate this life of mine. Get rid of all the walls that would separate me from anyone else so that only love remains. Amen.